All right, so we are back. Um, hold on. <clears throat> um, thanks for joining us tonight. The number is 323-843-6160. You can also call in with Skype if you like. Um, so I'm talking about gay marriage tonight, and um, we've talked a little bit about several of the arguments that are made against gay marriage. Um, and I'm going to also play in a minute a short, very short, like two-minute clip by one of the justices, of one of her responses uh, and questions to – one of the points made by the um, Proposition 8 attorney today in the Supreme Court, um, it was recorded, of course, and so and part of the uh, part of that was released today. And it was a very perceptive and intelligent response uh, and question, and kind of kind of just knocked down his entire argument, really. Um, so I'll play that in a minute. But first, I wanted to talk a little bit more about it. But I told you I was not going to talk about religion or or gay rights from a religious standpoint, but I did want to briefly say that, you know, most people say, most people I find have an issue with gay marriage because they find that gay relationships, they feel gay relationships are immoral or violate um, the quote-unquote sacred institution of marriage. So my question for you is, says who? The Bible? You know, I guess, you know, somehow I always thought that the freedom of religion implied the right to freedom from religion as well, but that seems to be a point that is always lost on the highly religious. And the Bible really has no standing in American law. Um, you know, and even Thomas Jefferson, who was basically the father of America of American democracy, uh, very, you know, proudly took credit for the fact that um the America is not based in religion. You know, unlike most countries at the time when America was founded, uh it was not a religious religiously based country and you don't have to be one particular religion or ascribe to any particular religion to be part of the country or or to not be beheaded or killed or something in those days like the days of King Henry the Eighth, which was way before that, but still. My point is is that you had the freedom to be religious if you wanted to be religious and to be uh, a Puritan or be you know, a Christian or whatever um, or you had the freedom to not be religious. You could be an atheist, or you could be just spiritual, or you could be a witch, or you could be whatever you wanted to be, whatever religion you wanted to ascribe to. And so that's part of the issue is that – and that's why I don't typically discuss this topic based on a religious standpoint, as I said at the beginning of my show, because you cannot argue with someone's religion. Someone who is religious is typically quite – um, devout in whatever the particular religious belief system is. So it, it's not, you know, even though I may find what they believe in to be complete horseshit and completely retarded nonsense, they may really believe it and find it to be something that they really feel deeply. And so there's no point in arguing with someone about the religious beliefs because they're always going to believe what they believe and you're always going to believe what you believe. So there's really no point. So I don't argue being gay or gay marriage or the whatever from that standpoint. However, as I said, to people's moral or morality, moral compass typically comes from the religion. And so even if you are religious, though, the difference is this. You have to remember that there is a difference between and a separation of church and state in this country. And so everybody has the right to be religious if they want to be. If they don't want to be, they don't want to be. And not all, not all world religions have a problem with homosexuality. And a lot of parts of Buddhism, for example, you know, celebrate gay relationships freely and would like to have authority to make them legal through marriage. And in that sense, their religious freedom is being infringed. You know, if one believes in religious freedom, the recognition that opposition to gay marriage is based on religious arguments is reason enough to discount the argument altogether. So, you know, that's one contradictory right say up uh, right there, but or one contradictory thing right there. Um but another thing people are saying is it threatens marriage, you know, and by allowing people to marry, it threatens marriage. It doesn't sound very logical to me. I mean, if you if you allow gay people to marry each other, you no longer encourage them to marry people to whom they feel little attraction, with whom they most often cannot relate sexually, and thereby reduce the number of supposed heterosexual marriages that end up in divorce courts. So if it is the institution of heterosexual marriage that worries you, then consider that no one would require you or anyone else to ever participate in a gay marriage. As they say, if you don't want to have a gay marriage and don't marry a gay person, it's pretty fucking simple. And so you would have the freedom of choice of choosing what kind of marriage to participate in, something more than what you have now, you know? And, um, you know, I think that a lot of it has to do with religion. And so I just wanted to quickly say that because I really wanted to point out that it is really all about 
um, bigotry and prejudice. So quickly, I want to play this one-minute clip. It's a one-minute, 23-second of Justice uh, Sotomayor. Um, her name is um, – I can't remember her first name, but anyway. Uh, she um, – today, was re- this was her response to one of the arguments by – the Proposition 8 attorney who was defending Proposition 8 from California, and I think it pretty succinctly points out what um, the entire point of this whole case is. So listen real quick. Outside of the uh, marriage context, can you think of any other rational basis, reason, for a state using sexual orientation as a factor in uh, denying homosexuals benefits or imposing burdens on them? Is there any other rational decision-making that the government could make, denying them a job, not granting them benefits of some sort, any other decision? Your Honor, I, I cannot. I, I do not have uh, uh, any uh, anything to offer you in, right. in that regard. If, I that, think if that is true, then why aren't they a class? If they're a class that makes any other discrimination improper, irrational, then why aren't we treating them as a class for this one benefit? Are you saying that the interest of marriage is so much more compelling than any other interest the state could have? So essentially she's saying that because one of his arguments is that gay people should not have a right to marriage because gay people, they're saying we are not considered considered a protected class in this country and should therefore not be allowed to have our own definition, a quote-unquote definition, of marriage. And the reason that she, what she's saying is essentially that, well, if gay people are considered in, in every other way to not have to be discriminated against based on their orientation, whether it's a job or whatever the case is, then why is it okay to discriminate against them in this one area of marriage? And you know that's why I love, I mean, I love rational people. <laughs> I mean, she's making an argument, a rational argument with her brain and not basing it on anything else other than ration, rationality, excuse me. So she's only speaking based on that. And that's what makes a good judge or good justice or anything. And the, the problem with the other justices on the court helping to decide the question of Proposition 8 and DOMA is that they are, and I'm, yes, I am referring to the conservative ones, is that they are basing their decisions not upon rational thought. They're basing their decisions upon personal prejudice. And that is essentially, I mean, that is not essentially, I mean, that is completely against what it means to be a Supreme Court justice. They're basing their decisions. Even Scalia today said, when did, when did it become illegal or, or wrong to discriminate against gay people? I mean, he actually said that. And I know what he's trying to say, but he's saying that he is discriminating essentially against gay people because he doesn't like gay people and doesn't want gay people to have equality or equal rights. Um, so he's saying, when did that become illegal or wrong? And he's basically <laughs> admitting the fact that he's discriminating because he doesn't like gay people. Um, and and so that is that is that is the difference to me between um, a judge or justice in this case, as they're called, um, whom is actually looking at the facts and, and judging based um, outside of personal confliction or personal uh, personal what's the word we're looking for personal um, um, conviction uh, and voting for things based on what is right what is right what does the law say what is constitutionally correct what is what is correct according to the way our country was set up and that is how she is voting and that is why. This will eventually pass, and the problem I see is is that I don't think that it is going to pass um, it, this way in, initially. I mean, I could be wrong. I hope it does, but I do think this. I don't. I think that they probably will strike down Proposition Eight as being unconstitutional. And as I said earlier, what that means is in California, they are going to.